Hey folks, welcome back to the homestead. So I feel like this video needs just a little bit of an introduction. Uh, we're kicking off a big project here. Uh, well, I should say it been kicked off a while back, but on video, this will be the kind of the first official kickoff of it. And that is building out my new food forest area. And it's gonna be a pretty, pretty large area for me anyways. Um, and this is gonna be something that takes place over the coming years. And so this video is gonna be kind of the first major phase of it. Um, and then we'll continue to add to this in upcoming videos. Uh, so this will be kind of a series. So it's a little bit longer format. And uh, so for some people, I know that they want short, quick videos. Other people like longer format. So if you like a longer format, that's gonna be more what this is. Um, also, I wanna mention a couple of platitudes, you might say. You know, you, it's been said that a uh, imperfect plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. And that's kind of way the way I operate. Um, I get an idea, it's got to move forward, otherwise we don't ever do it, so it's not always perfect. And you know, they, it's a big project, people always often wonder, I often wonder when I see people's amazing projects, like, man, how'd you do that? Well, how do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time. And so that's what we do, is we take it in chunks. And so today, is just the first chunk. Otherwise, that's the intro, let's check it out. There they go, getting to work. We're making a lot more room for more food forest. All right. <laughs> He's gonna grab a hold of that and we're gonna saw off the top about five foot high. And then we're gonna have somebody come out and do a... Somebody's gonna come out and carve a tiki thing into it. Same with the other one right over there. <laughs> there it goes. Very cool. So this is all going to be food forest out here now. So we got our food forest section started over there. And now all the rest of this, <clears throat> we're going to continue along as food forest. Okay, so the clearing is all done. <laughs> what a mess, huh? Well, obviously we got some work to do now to come in and kind of level out the ground a bit and get it ready for uh, some new garden bed areas well food forest areas and you can see we left a couple of these here like this right here and that one right there where we can have our carvings done to make them like a tiki post so those will be cool anyways i am very excited this has been something that's been on my mind for quite a while and to be finally able to start getting it going is pretty awesome. So this is a drag right here and this is something that my sister has because she has a horse arena and so they, they use this to drag out the horse arena uh, to get rid of the hoof prints and flatten things out again after they've been riding on it for a while. My mother has this gator and it just loops onto the back of the hitch right there and we can pull it around and it helps to, to flatten things out it's heavy iron and uh, it just well it drags things <laughs> it drags out the uh, you know all of this stuff it starts to, to grab all that stuff up for us all the roots and uh, debris weeds whatnot and uh, helps us to kind of flatten things out so that's our project today we're just working on this and then we're going to throw some seed down for some clover some uh, ground cover material i think we've got some mimosa some red clover, some white clover. Uh, we're gonna do a few different things in here and see what, what does well for us. I think we got some perennial peanut coming too. Yeah, perennial peanut.
So basically that works like a big rake. You can see how it comes through here and it really just kind of rakes things up into these piles. Now I can come through actually with a manual rake and just to collect all the stuff if I want to, uh, throw it in the compost pit, but it does the bulk of the work um, and saving me from having to be out here for hours with a hand rake trying to do all this stuff. And we don't have to get this area perfect because most of this is gonna be covered up with more soil and mulch and stuff like that. Uh, but we're gonna have a few walking pathways and so you know we want we want it to be we're not gonna be out here breaking our ankles as we try to walk around So this is a banana pit that we're building right now, right here. There'll be a video coming in, in the near future about that. So stay tuned for that one. All right, so let me give you all a brief rundown of what's going on here. If you haven't seen my food forest before, this is it over here. And um, this is uh, a, you know, very young. It's only about less than a year old um, that we've been working on this, except for a couple of the trees we put in um, last year, but the rest of this we just have been working on this year, getting this stuff built up. Oh, what's he doing? <laughs> Chasing after geckos, I think. <laughs> Anyways, so the idea here is that we're gonna continue to do like we've done. We'll do some kind of a border with some wood chips. The, the border hopefully will be just a kind of temporary for right now until we can get the grasses killed off here so that they're not growing in and have some better ground cover uh, that, um, that we're okay with having. Uh, whether that be some perennial peanut, some mimosa, some clover, or whatever that is. Anyways, for right now we're gonna be we're gonna keep the border, and we're gonna continue to build this kind of thing going around the perimeter, with some islands out here in the middle that we can walk and weave our way in between. So over here in this area, we had a whole bunch of trees here that we've removed. I was gonna wait on that, but we had the opportunity to come up to get it done now, so we've decided to go ahead and do that. And so we're gonna have a few ro rows of some trees with stuff growing in between them, and then some walking paths in the middle. So today, what I got, I have some trees to put in. I got a persimmon, I got a longa, and I got a loquat. We got to put in the ground, and then we're gonna put down um, some, uh, some seed for some clover, uh, white clover and red uh, crimson clover. So that's our project today. So we're gonna need the wheelbarrow for this. It's an opportunity for me to show you the shed I just built. Just put this one up a few weeks back. All built from scratch. I used to actually build sheds for a living. I had my own company. These were the handles that I used to have on the sheds and uh, I kept one and I've held on to it for about six or seven years now waiting for an opportunity. Actually it's been closer to ten years waiting for an opportunity to use it. Yeah, they work pretty good. Better than most handles you find on shed doors. Anyway, there we are. Just a little lean-to off of the house that'll allow me to keep a bunch of junk in here. Have I just threw a whole bunch of stuff in here. I haven't had a chance to actually put up any shelves or anything like that yet. But there's our wheelbarrow. Let's grab that. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put the persimmon and the longan right there. I think we're going to do the loquat down on the end over there. I like this little island of these trees. That's why I left these ones. Uh, we can do something interesting with that, you know, aesthetically. And same thing with this little island over here. Uh, I think we're going to do... Um, this is not going to be your, your standard old food forest where it's boring. It's going to be fun. We're going to have some pirate themed stuff going on out here. So I'll probably do like a treasure chest over there or something. <laughs> Make it fun in here, right? Um, and I think a little quad down there. So if we do these here, then we can have a walking path right here. And then we'll be able to do another row of some trees in here with another walking path and then another row over there. So that'll be able to give us three rows of food foresty type of stuff. I don't know what the right terminology here is. Don't, uh, don't hold me to my to my verbo verbology. Um, also, right in here, I don't know. We might hang a hammock or something there. Maybe do a, a white sand down at the bottom. Again, kind of towards that pirate theme. And I'm thinking about getting like a, a skeleton and have him hang it up off of the thing here and dress him in pirate clothes. <laughs> I don't know. Just playing around, having fun. But anyways, let's get these. Oh, and these 
this one here and there's another one over there we left the tree in the ground we're going to carve those in a with a tiki um almost like a totem pole but it's a tiki design uh so yeah let's get these trees in the ground Hey, I also want to quickly point out that the reason I'm starting with these ones over here on this side rather than starting over here or over there is because the sun rises over there, comes up like this, right? And so I want these to, because they need full sun, I want them to get as much sun as they can throughout the day. Um, and so if we, put, if we did those ones later and first we planted over here and planted over here, well then these are going to grow up and they're going to block some of the sun while this is young. So we'll put these ones in the ground, let them start to grow up a bit before we start to plant this one, this row, and then that row last. And hopefully that will allow us to capture as much sun as possible. All right, so first tree is in, and man, it is hot out to be putting trees in. I'm tired, I'm sweating. I don't know if we can get the other ones done today. But, uh, well, you can see what we did there. We didn't put this deep down into the ground. I left it up about four inches or so above the ground level. Um, and the reason for that is because as we come back and build our food forest in and around us, we're gonna bring in about four inches of soil, and then we're gonna put in some mulch and stuff like that. So I wanted to put it up high now to be prepared for that and then we've just added more soil around it so it's got you know maybe uh two and a half to three foot around the perimeter where it's kind of well it, it's mostly mostly flat but it does slope downwards a little bit which will when i water it that will let the water run down but then i put a, a berm around the perimeter and so where the water should soak into the, the bulk of it anyways is right around where the root line is okay the root line is not right at the base the root line was around the size of that um, that pot that I took it out of and so hopefully that'll get the water there to where it needs to be and what I put in the ground there as far as this, the soil material was a mix of some garden soil and some mushroom compost and some native soil that I had here and uh, the three of those things that'll give it a little bit of feed some good material some soft soft stuff that's gonna hold moisture but also drain well um, so that's the idea all right we got to continue on <sighs> boy all right, so we got two of the trees in. We got the uh, the longan and we got the persimmon. Loquats over here, waiting to get put in. But we got rain going to come in about an hour, about 45 minutes supposedly. Um, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to go ahead and put some the seed down and cover it up and uh, let it get rained on, and hopefully get that started going. So what we've got is from outside outside pride. Uh, we've got some white Dutch clover. And we have some crimson clover and i'm going to use a spreader we're going to spread it spread it out and then you know all this stuff with shortages and everything like that i, I heard that we were having a, a hay shortage i had not heard we we're having a straw short shortage <laughs> so when i went to the feed store to get straw to cover this up with uh they didn't have any straw but they have tons of hay so go figure um so then she was going to sell me some pine needles and uh we went to go get the pine needles and those were all gone so i have some um bedding some horse bedding some you know wood shavings and uh that's not perfect but that's what i could get hopefully that'll keep the birds from eating all the seed and keep it um, help to keep retain some moisture there uh so that they don't dry out i tell you i'm like desperate for some ground cover that's not grass so i hope this stuff grows and does really well because i don't want to be mowing in here um i don't want grass in my uh, beds where i'm trying to grow food i don't want to be out there trying to pick it up out of there or I don't, definitely don't want to spray anything. So hopefully between, between the clovers, um, some perennial peanut, the mimosa, hopefully something will grow well here and suppress the grass. Well, folks, there you go. You can see we finally got all that seed down and we got all the shavings down. And I do hear thunder rolling. So hopefully that rain will come and get this nice and wet. Um, this stuff can take a week or two, I think, to, 
to sprout and in that time we really can't let it dry out so we've got to well, hopefully we'll get a lot of rain and um, we'll have to work on keeping a sprinkler over here or something until it sprouts all right now even though we got some rain coming uh, a little rain is probably not going to be enough water for these trees that we just planted so anytime I plant trees I want to give them like five ten gallons of water just just to get started depending on how big the tree is and um, uh, that should just give it enough water because this is a stressful time for it to make sure that well it's just going to get through this transplant period okay um, so five to ten gallons on day one depending on the size of the tree and then every day uh, for the first couple of weeks give it at least a couple of gallons um, of water to keep it you know keep it feeling comfortable and happy for that first period until it gets settled in We also want to put down a good layer of mulch. That'll help to keep the soil cooler, help to retain the moisture, and help to suppress the growth of any weeds and grasses. Um, now, in truth, any mulch will be, will be better than no mulch. What I have here is not ideal though. This is just regular pine bark, and it's gonna do all the things I said it's gonna do. But what it's not gonna do is to provide, to feed the soil at all and help the soil become better. So ideally what you would like to have is some like ground up tree limbs that's going to have some greenery in there um, and that'll yeah, as it decomposes it's going to release a lot more good stuff to the soil than than these will these won't really do anything for the soil but they will help to keep it um, uh, like i said drier drier help it retain moisture keep it cooler uh, and to help to suppress the growth of things we don't want growing in there uh, because they're pine bark it's possible that they might help to um, lower the ph um, and most of these things that I'm putting in right now, they would prefer a little bit lower pH. Um, but hey, you got to work with what you got. This is what I got right now. I couldn't get the other stuff. When you put down your mulch, try and go a few inches deep, but also keep it a few inches away from the, the root base here. We want it to be able to breathe here. We don't want this to stay wet all the time. Um, otherwise, it can start to rot out and we get root rot. Um, so pull the, the mulch back from the root base a few inches so that that can breathe and dry out. All right, lastly, before we call the job of planting the trees done, um, we want to stake them. I found it's really important because the roots are not strong yet, they haven't spread out, and winds come through and they start pushing and lean, making them lean, and that just weakens them. And you have to stake them up and they have to go through a period of recovery better to stake them right from the get-go and I'm using these landscape stakes these are great uh, I've generally just used a piece of you know rebar or something stuck in the ground at an angle but these things make it so much easier they have these little spots here where you can loop around um, they're just great and they're very durable so that you can continue to reuse them again and again I want to show you though um, my favorite knot to use when I need to cinch something down uh, that's super easy to undo afterwards. It's called the trucker's hitch. If you've never learned it before, it's super useful. I use it all the time. So let me show you quickly how to make that knot. All right, so the trucker's hitch is a real simple knot. Let me show you first here on this uh, shovel handle how I do the first part of the knot. And that's uh, attaching it to whatever it is that we're going to attach it to. So we loop it around it. And now in the short end here, this is for me, this is my right hand, this is my left hand. Okay, and in the, in the end with the short bit of rope, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let it droop down and I'm actually going to throw it underneath of the two ropes. So it went under, underneath the one on the left and, sorry, underneath the one on the right and under the one on the left. So it looks like this, okay? And we have this loop here. And we're just going to reach through this loop to grab this that we can pull through a little slip knot, right? That can easily come back out like that. So again, we have the short end here. I'm gonna loop it underneath the two. I'm gonna reach through, grab it, and sit, pull it through there. And we can cinch that down on there. So that's the first part of the knot. Now, that, what's so great is, so this makes it so easy to come undone because we can just pull this off of here, like so, oh, come on, like that, when we wanna take it undone. Now let me show you the other part. All right, so for the next part of this, okay, we've already attached it to the tree up there in the method I showed you. For the next part of this, 
we're going to go ahead and make another little loop up here. We're going to make a loop and fold it back away from the tree, okay, and pull a bit through, a loop through. Okay, now this is another little slip knot that we can just easily undo. So again, we go, we loop it and we're going to go away from the tree and pull some of this end through it. Now, what this gives us now is a loop that when we come wrap around our stake and we come back through the loop with the other end, now we got something we can pull against to cinch down, right, a taut line up here. Okay? And then you can finish this off however you like, but what I do is I pinch right here, I make a loop around. Okay, make a loop like that, pull it back through, okay, like so. And now that's stuck like that. Now to undo it, all we gotta do, pull that, and that's done, done. And then we can undo it up at the tree by just pulling here. Super simple. Trucker's hitch. You should learn it. It's very useful. All right, folks, well, it's been three days, and you can see here, we got sprouting going on, right? It's kind of harder to see as the, you get further up in the distance, but there's sprouting going on all over the place. There's sprouting over there, there's sprouting down here, sprouting there. So that's very exciting. I was getting concerned because you can see we had heavy rains and then a lot of that wood shaving stuff has washed into, washed away from certain areas. And, um, you know, that, if we had the straw, that wouldn't have happened. But it seems like we're going to be okay. All right, folks, well, that's going to have to be a wrap for this video, I think. Um, I, if you like this style of content, go ahead and hit the like button down below. And we do have a, another part two coming out here pretty soon on the food forest where we're going to be doing uh, the perennial peanut. We're going to be doing sunshine mimosa. I got that two ways. We're going to be starting some seeds and I got some plants that we're going to transplant as well. And then we have several other uh, cuttings that we're going to go ahead and start to root that will be ending up out in the food forest once they do. Um, so yeah, if you like this content, hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell notification so that you get notified when part two comes out or any other videos that we put out. I right, thank you for watching. Have a great day.